Good evening, everyone. I'm calling to order our business meeting for the school committee. It's August 22nd at 634. We're in the senior center. Um, let's begin with the roll call, please, Mrs. Kennedy. Yes. Uh, Mayor Ridden's going to be late. Ms. Hall? Here. Ms. Walker? Present. Mr. Callahan? Here. Mr. Menon is absent. Ms. Spalding is absent. Mr. Cole? Here. Okay, hey, everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any public comment this evening? Excellent. All right. I just need to read our statement and then you can come on up. The school committee invites members of the public to offer public comment, a welcome and important part of our work. Speakers are allowed up to two minutes for comments. Comments longer than two minutes may be submitted to the district office in writing for inclusion in the minutes of the meeting. We expect and encourage civility. Any remarks that are defamatory or abusive are always considered out of order and the chairperson may terminate an individual's privilege of address on that basis. We ask all speakers to respect the following guidelines. Speakers may offer objective criticism of and or ideas for school operations and programs on the agenda. Please refrain from complaints about specific school personnel or members of the school community. Finally, we request that no student names or any identifying information be offered as that would violate the student's right to privacy. Okay, Ms. Glynn, you can come on up. Just need to um, state your name and address and then you have your two minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I noticed that the curriculum renewal. Uh, Can I have your name, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, my name is Carrie Glenn. Um, An address? Oh, sorry. 10 Salem Street in Newburyport. And I noticed that the curriculum renewal was on the memorandum uh, for tonight. And so I thank you for the opportunity to just. Uh, have some questions on the curriculum. Um, there's just a lot of changes, you know, the website, and um, I'm just a parent that is genuinely curious about the curriculum. Um, and uh, some of my questions are left over from the forum. Um, the middle school uh, and the middle school presentation, and I know there was some meetings that took place uh, a couple years ago with some select parents and staff and some organizations and they developed some focus standards um, learning for just learning for social justice identity diversity justice and action um, I'm, I'm just curious about that particular one and how it uh, is interwoven into the day um, is learning for social justice going is it in math is it in reading is it uh, what what is that um, and then they had the three targeted areas of library collection, curriculum, and student disciplinary act practices. So I guess I'm just curious as to, is this select group, that they seem to be having a great influence on our curriculum and on our library collection. So I'd like a, a more transparency around this group and how, how it functions and just to know more about the influence and how, how things are chosen. And then finally, the staff-led equity protocols. Uh, an example was taking a lesson plan and saying, here's a unit on fractions, something you think there's no biases in. So does the teacher see a bias maybe in fractions? And then they, uh, what does the curriculum look like when they're working through a bias uh, on a fraction? Um, I didn't know there were biases with fractions or math, but I'm, I'm just- Sorry, Ms. Glenn, that's time if you okay. wrap it up. All right, I uh, just would like a lot more transparency from the district. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next up we have the consent agenda. Welcome, Mayor Reardon. Thank you, good to be here. Uh, do we have some warrants this evening, Mr. Callahan? Uh, we don't have warrants. I signed them at central office, but Mr. Little Hill was not there to get the packet, so I don't have them. So next time. Is it, okay, so would it be later in the agenda or do you think? 
You don't have to go. We can we can we can do that next we time. We can wait. We can do it for next Whatever. time. Whatever. Yep. That's fine. Then we can wait. You can. Yeah. Okay to wait? Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's so um, moving on to minutes. We have two sets of minutes. Um, we'll start with any corrections on the minutes from June 6th. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I would just ask that we exclude the forum summary, which was not part of our regular business meeting. Um, I don't believe we need to include that in the minutes, and I, um, I, would, pr I would prefer to just vote on the meeting minutes themselves for the organization, business organizational part of the meeting and just exclude that portion. So I just okay. propose, propose modifying the June 6, I guess, minutes by to exclude the, the forum summary because it wasn't part of our business committee meeting. Great. Are there any other um, questions or thoughts on those? Can we, should we vote to amend that and then? I think so. If someone okay. wants to second that amendment. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So then do we vote again to approve? Yes. Okay. So uh, a vote to um, motion to approve the June 6 minutes as amended. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? Are we all set? All in favor? Aye. 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 And everyone was present at that meeting. Now the next one is um, let me see. June 29th, that was, um, that was a virtual meeting, and Ms. Walker was not in attendance, um, so she won't be voting on this one. Were there any, um, any corrections, any issues with those minutes? Okay, I, I didn't see anything either. So a motion to approve the minutes from June 29th? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Uh, I think we're on to the introduction of new administrators. Are, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. How are we doing with the projector? Is it good to go? Or? We're working on it. She's working on it. Okay. Well, just really stretch out these yeah. introductions. That's right. <laughs> it's like just like uh, it's pregame before, the, you know, <laughs> get all the yeah. kinks out. Uh, well, first of all, welcome back. Our first meeting to kick off the uh, school year. We're really excited. Um, we have some of our central office staff that's in the audience we're gonna introduce and also kind of run down our new administrative team and uh, some replacements. So first uh, introduction is Mr. Wesley Pierce who's accepted the Director of Student Services for the Newburyport Public Schools. Uh, he's been getting his transitioning over the summer. And Mr. Pierce has an undergraduate degree in special education from Michigan State University and a master's degree in educational leadership from the College of Columbia University. He's an experienced special educator, began his career in New York City High School, co-teaching in math, science, and English. His family brought him to Massachusetts, and since 2008, he's worked for the Revere Public Schools for the past 10 years, and has served as the Director of Student Services for grades six to 12 in that role. He managed educated professional development for their district and developed student-centered programming and ensured special education services were delivered with excellence. Mr. Pierce's educational philosophy aligns well with the Newburyport Public Schools as he shared one of his most important takeaways uh, from the leadership experience is an understanding of the vital role of developing strong collaborative relationships with colleagues, staff, students, and families and community partners. Um, really in student success. Um, so we are very excited to have Mr. Pierce. If you wanna come on up and say hello to the folks that are watching and our school committee. So Mr. Wesley Pierce, we'll give you a little round of applause. There you go. Thank you everybody. Again, my name is Wesley Pierce and I'm just really looking forward to this opportunity. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Uh, serving the students at Newberry Court. So uh, I look forward to our time together. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Right. Welcome. I would have brought up that I was a Buckeye today, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> you were? Did you know I went to Ohio State? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's great. All right, our next introduction is uh, someone very familiar with the Newberry Pool Public Schools, but uh, in a new role, Ms. Pam Keeley has accepted her position uh, for the Director of Human Resources for the Newberry Poor Public Schools. And she began uh, a few weeks ago in this position. And many of you know Ms. Keeley, uh, since 2013, she's worked within the food service program as the Director of Food Services for the past five years and has built partnerships with local districts, state organizations, Our Neighbors Table, Nourishing the North Shore, and expanded the school breakfast program. In the past three years, she was called upon to manage the pandemic, as we all were. Through those tough times, she led her team create, creatively to, um, for staffing, food, supply, and health-related problems the Newburyport families were facing for food insecurity and was supported by the school meal service programs. Ms. Keeley, before um, stepping into that role as food services, many people may not know, um, she has an investment um, degree and is an invest advisor for NASDAQ. She was a trader uh, within the stock market in New York City. Was a leader of a large investment firm. Pam has extensive experience in developing high-performing teams and managing in fast-paced environments. Her background in finance will support us building responsive and sustainable human resource operations. And in her experience in managing both the private and public sectors will allow us to create people-centered systems so the district can continue to thrive and grow. So come on up, Ms. Pam Keeley. everyone. I'm Pam Keeley. Um, super excited to be working in this new role. I've had some great interactions with the staff over the last couple of weeks, so really looking forward to getting school started and moving forward in a different direction with a different job. So thank you. And the, the good news is, um, with her finance background, she does offer advice and there's no inside stock trades <laughs> within the district. So thank you. Bye, <laughs> You must have worked on these jokes all day. No, that, was, that one just came to me. Yeah, I struck out earlier today. Um, our next um, person we'd like to introduce is Tammy Tattlebaum, is the Director of Food Service taking over for PM Cayley. Uh, Tammy has a bachelor's degree in clinical nutrition and psychology. Her background includes seven years working in hospital nutrition environment, and most recently, the past six years, Tammy has worked in nutrition in the educational arena through grades K through eight. She's also certified by the CDC in diabetes education and prevention. So, Miss Tammy Tarbon, come on up. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet everyone. I'm really excited um, for this role and to be in this community. Um, so far, everyone's been really welcoming. I know I have some really big shoes to fill. Um, but I know Pam has been a really great support, so I'm really excited. Um, thank you, everyone. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Our next two administrators that we're going to introduce um, are not here tonight, and I think for our next meeting when the principals are here to introduce their new staff, they're part of the new staff, but we really just want to uh, highlight their expertise too. So Ms. Lee Curtis Pere has accepted the position of assistant principal at the uh, Edward J. G. Mullen Upper Middle School. Uh, Ms. Curtis Pere joins Newburyport administrative team. She has 18 years of experience as both a special education and general education teacher for third through sixth graders. Um, Lee has a deep understanding of the academic, social, and emotional needs of upper elementary children. She's excited to bring her transitioning into the administrative leadership role, brings her with experience, leading support, scheduling, and safety initiatives. With her undergrad degree in psychology from the University of New Hampshire and a master's degree of intensive special needs from Fitchburg State University, uh, Lee is a well-prepared support Principal, well prepared support principal Tara Rossi in leading the Mullen School. She shared in her conversations uh, that she understands that the students and teachers thrive in a safe, trusting environment that fosters open communication and risk taking. So we're very excited to have Ms. Lee Curtis Parade as part of our team. We can give her, if she's watching, we might just. <laughs> 
<laughs> in our newest uh, and uh, last administrator that we're going to recognize tonight is Katie Parsons, assistant principal at the NOC. Um, we did uh, for Katie, she has a background at UMass Lowell, uh, UMass Amherst, literacy chair and English chair, and most recently at Whittier as a learning uh, loss coordinator, a teacher coach, English teacher, and she was also the Whittier union president. Last school year, uh, she began to work towards completing requirements for her initial moderate disabilities license and completed three graduate level courses in supervised practicum. Ms. Uh, Parsons has already joined the team this summer and has been an instrumental uh, part of our team, also working with Ms. Ippolito on our mentoring program. So we welcome uh, Ms. Katie Parsons, assistant principal at the NOC. And those are my introductions. Okay. Uh, next up is the health and COVID update. Did we need the projector for that? We do not, oh, which fantastic. is good news. That's great. <laughs> um, Ms. McDonald here? Ms. McDonald is not here. She's okay. on her way back from South Carolina. She uh, had the great fortune of bringing her daughter to college, and she's on her way back. And since um, there's been a lot of changes with COVID, and Hopefully this is a nice brief report at this time. Um, so for COVID-19 cases uh, for the summer school, I mean, we still report and catalog uh, positive cases. So throughout the summer, we had four staff and four students. Our DESC guidelines and DPH fall COVID guidelines is part of our newsletter that will be coming out that parents can click on to look at the updates. Um, as you all may know, there's no further state support for testing supplies, so Binex now ordered for symptomatic testing. Home testing program ended in June. Successful COVID vaccination clinic, we just had one August 16th. We had over 150 uh, people come out to get vaccinated, and mostly it was grade uh, five to 11-year-olds that were at that uh, vaccination clinic. We applied for the waiver for orders um, to enable NPS nurses to continue to test symptomatic individuals. So um, Ms. Lauren McDonald's ahead of the curve and ended up getting that um, grant. So throughout our school year for families and students that need to be tested, um, we'll be able to maintain that. So those are our COVID updates at this time. Need a little more time, or I'm gonna go without it. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we, I mean, we could just go on to another item. If I don't, I don't know. Can I just say one thing about COVID, real quick? Of course. Just to piggyback on the COVID, um, <clears throat> if people are looking for home tests, we still have a lot at City Hall. You can get them right when you walk in from the greeter at City Hall. I mean, I think our positivity rate in the city right now is eight, just over eight percent, um, which is you know. It's good, we're in a good spot. So I would say just moving forward as well, um, you know, for people who, you know, are still concerned, you can wear your mask. Um, you know, I think we have to encourage that. And I think you, we, you are seeing that more around the city. Um, but just moving forward, um, you know, just do what you feel is comfortable. And like I said, we, we do have these tests. We will be doing more vaccination and booster clinics coming up this fall. Um, so if you haven't got those booster shots, I think we're around 46% in the city. We would love to get that up over 50%. So if you haven't got those boosters yet, you know, reach out. We'll let you know when the next booster and, and vaccine clinic will be. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. So you, you'd like to go ahead? Yeah. Let me go ahead. Um, I think that would be helpful, yeah. Thanks. Okay, so thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, I'm just gonna introduce the new website and unfortunately my slideshow is not working, but there is a nine page summary of the communications plan, the website, kind of how we got here to where we are and where we're headed that we'll post on the, on the website so people can look at that. But just to, just to walk back to last summer before we started our strategic planning and our focus groups, we um, were hearing a lot of feedback from the community and from the school committee in regards to structuring our communications plan. 
in a variety of different ways so that information was easy to access from parents, um, so that there was proactive sharing of good news, so, so that we were coordinating across our whole school district. People weren't getting multiple pieces of communication from the same information from multiple places. And so that our accessibility and translation features were strong. So we embarked on kind of a multifaceted communication plan with the primary goal of ensuring that our accessibility and translation features were um, going to be able to be used by any of our communication tools. And the first thing we did was to replace the communication tool that we use for our mass communication. So whether you receive an email, a phone call, now we can also do texting. That system that allows us to alert many people at once or a few people at a time, however that works. We replaced that and then in conjunction to that, we replaced our website. Both of them are coming from the same vendor so that they talk to each other. And um, the website has a product, is an add-on that we also purchased, it's called Ally, that will allow us to, when we upload a PDF onto our website, if a person needs to go on there and have it, a variety of different accessibility features will be available from translation to audio file to um, being able to download it in different types of formats. And you'll, you'll notice that on the website with an A and a little downward arrow. So that's a piece that we're working on. So replace the communication tool, replace the website. We're also going to be launching in the fall an app th so that parents can download from the Apple Store or from Google Play for their Android, an app that will allow them to just follow one school, follow all the schools, and a quick and easy way to get a calendar, to get schedules, and for us to also push notify you if there's something upcoming and coming along. And one just thought about that. One of the reasons that we went with one vendor is so that for our administrative team, they can go to one place, and from one place they could send a text, they can send an email, they can send a phone call, they can push notify to the app, or they can make an announcement on the website all from one place, and all of those are translatable as we go. So the accessibility was, I think, really what was driving us in terms of being a school-based communication. Um, the website, we rolled over from an, the old website to the new website starting in July. We're still working on some of the pages you might find are under construction. And, um, but pretty much all the information is there. Another area that we're still working on is some of the accessibility features of our PDFs that we have up there. The app, as I was saying, we're hoping to launch in September, um, and we're gonna phase it in. So when we first launch it, it's really just gonna be back and forth communication. As we move along, <coughs> our goal is that um, they'll, it'll be more interactive, and gradually that we're gonna pull in some of the places that people are having to go to a third party website to pay or a third party website to find other information, we're gonna try to gradually pull all that back together into our one product and kind of get there with our communication that way. Um, the other thing that our new communication tool is allowing us to do, and hopefully you've seen that in our district newsletters and in the, the information that's coming from principals is to better embed graphics, to better use photography in order to allow our communications to be less text heavy easier to read, a little bit more accessible in terms of, there's a lot of information that comes from schools and we're trying to just layer it and be very thoughtful about how we put that information out, how you can find it, and everything hopefully easily um, accessible on the website. And if not, send us an email and let us know what would be easier um, or what would be a different way for you to find it. And then just finally, as a part of our communication, was to assist the superintendent and the leadership team in reporting on, on our dis district strategic planning. So we completed a, a final report that was presented to the school committee this spring, as well as a final report on the portrait of a graduate, and all of that is put together and accessible also on the um, district website. And I just wanna add in addition a thank you to NCM Hub who has been helping us and the superintendent to also add video components to a lot of our communications. Not all of them, but quite a few. Um, we're able to post those on YouTube and connect those to our website as well. And um, yeah, that's it. Questions? Yeah, I have one. Um, you know how first day of school your kid tends to come home with that packet full of forms? 
is that going to be completely replaced with filling in filling out things online or are we sort of a part we are there? not paperless this year okay but all of these underlying structures are put in place to kind of set us up with systems so that we can layer in paperless without going to a third party vendor so our goal is to be paperless um, for parents our goal is to have it not be you have to write your student's name and your address and your own name 17 times that we're not quite there this year um, but I think as we move through the year um, a lot less paper is happening and one of the changes has been also with the nursing team who are using snap you can get there on that. the website but yeah your health information they're getting really close to being paperless and so yeah so families We're can on that. still expect some paperwork but less they can correct first day great and hopefully the paperwork's all easily accessible on the website too if for some reason you you can't find it or your little person didn't bring it home from their locker or their backpack or the it bus happened. or wherever it ended up thank you <coughs> Ms. walker did you have a question yeah just um thank you um i guess you mentioned that the presentation that you just ran through is available on the city on the i website. haven't put it up yet but i will okay where yeah. will it be available it will be available on the well i can put it a lot of different places so it'll be on the school committee page but then i can also make a link to our front page through a news article okay yep. thank you and also to just uh piggyback on that comment about the school committee page i know a lot of this isn't a work in progress but already it it seems much more organized the school committee page um and i i appreciate that and i think over time we're going to also be working on some revising how we present our policies on the website so it's more navigable they're already much more navigable as, as they are now so i appreciate that yeah that was a big piece of our our feedback was to allow our policies to be searchable so right now um, one of the things that happened over the summer is that all the policies that were in separate documents had to be put into a database to allow the database to be searchable so kind of the heavy lifting is done as we move forward hopefully we'll be updating within that database to maintain the searchability if you will you said one more question Go ahead. i just would suggest as because this is a work in progress i think it would be great to get regular updates on on how things are progressing as you sort of hit key milestones and i think one of the things you uh, touched on tonight is communications with the broader school community um, families in particular i know shifting over to a new mode of communication can be confusing and challenging for families who are just, who are used to doing it one way and, and you know for example just an example getting a notification about the snap updates might confuse some people i'm sure you guys are working on all that but um as you're you know the more you can share with us as you're going through the process i think it's one more venue for families to know what's going on with the website yes. for us to understand absolutely and also trying to like have m multiple places yeah. so it's you can't if you can't find it in this place then you can find it somewhere else exactly. yeah. yeah awesome okay thank All you set? Okay. sorry about the tax Please, thank you thank you okay this is an exciting one <laughs> <laughs> so we've reached an agreement with the ias and their um their unit ratified the contract so it's our turn tonight superintendent did you want to say a few words yeah i just that? um well first of all i want to thank um miss hall for her efforts in working uh with the management team and also stephanie caradaris the union president for the ias uh i just think it was a, a great process we ironed out i think a lot of uh, concerns on both sides and I think by the end of negotiations we're in a great place I think um, part of our um, job is it was really listening and um, you know part of the for us was kind of raise the base I think for year one salaries and then uh, add the additional uh, percentage increases but I think it was a lot of work it's a lot of listening it was a lot of give and take on both sides and I think we're in a great place um, and I just want to thank Ms. Hall's leadership for really I think bringing the whole process together um, and yeah so I think we're we're in a good spot thank you mm -hmm. great so uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to look through the MOU that's in our packet um, one thing I wanted to highlight that I was particularly particularly excited about is uh, 
new hires rate of pay, the um, current or you know about to end contract required that new employees be hire, hired at step one, which was making it very challenging for us to, um, to attract people with some experience. And now we can hire, with a new contract, we can hire up to step four, which is the equivalent of six to seven years of experience, which what we found is that's, that allows us to hire just about anyone who might be interested. Um, and actually allowed us to hire some people who we wouldn't have otherwise. So that was that was key, and we mm -hmm. felt really good about that. Um, yeah, and I would just say the the other piece that, um, as we all know, um, you know, hiring I think for all professions is difficult. You know, where there's a lot of open Currently, positions. Yeah. So and I and we understand uh, the crossing guard situation. Um, I think throughout the. North Shore, I mean, when we talk to superintendents, crossing guards are a, a tough position to hire, but as part of outside duties, um, we worked with the IAs to allow um, that piece. So for our IAs, we'll have an opportunity if they're interested um, to be crossing guards, you know, before school and after school, and that's something we're really excited about, kind of trying to problem solve uh, that so there's an opportunity for them uh, in there outside of their regular duties. So hopefully, um, when everyone's back, we'll um, be able to fulfill a lot of those vacancies. Great. Um, all right. I think we're ready. Someone could make a motion. Can I just ask a question? Yes. Uh, in terms of uh, numbers between specialists and generalists, how do most of the uh, employees fall like at what step I, I think every year it's um, it's it changes and as you know generalists are the general uh, support in the classroom a specialist are yeah. more one-to-one -one. Um, a lot of our veteran IAs uh, have already established I think great relationships with a lot of the families in Newburyport so I think a lot more of our veterans are more of the specialists and some of our newcomers are more the generalists so um, it all depends on the needs of the district. Okay. All right, thank you. Does that answer your question? Well, I only raise it because I know, for instance, in our regular edu ed educational staff that we have a, and it's because longevity, we have a bias toward, you know, some of the upper steps. Mm -hmm. I think, I forget, maybe, I wanna say 75%. I mean, I haven't seen the, the numbers lately. But I, the last time I was involved in the contract, I saw that those numbers were pretty high, and I was just curious, given that you know there's some seniority uh, bonuses uh, you know added to this new contract, and, and they're very reasonable. Mm -hmm. I was just curious what the bias is, and if we're able to you know ma maintain you know good staff or experienced staff, and it sounds like we are. Mm -hmm. it sounds like we are, but I just find that. It's important to recruit and retain, you know, the best staff possible. And I was just curious what the bias would was was if we were doing that, if we were kind of backfilling, always backfilling uh, positions with less experienced people. Yeah, so I I agree, and I think this is what's great. I, I think about the negotiations uh, for this uh, group. I think you you met the on both sides. So by increasing the base, you're attracting, um, I think, some newer people into Newburyport. But on the back end, I think our philosophy as, as school committee and also as uh, administration is the employees that have been dedicated to Newburyport Public Schools. So in this contract for our IAs that have been here with us for you know, 10, 15, 20 years, we added additional uh, increases in longevity. On the flip side, if you looked at the NTA, um, our membership, you know, for the teachers that have been here for 11 or more years, we also added um, uh, that 500 on year three, the $500 um, dollar, uh, stipend. So I think for us, it's a way of truly appreciating the employees that have dedicated, you know, their time to Newburyport and, and really put their heart and soul into the students and the families here. So I think that was, as we were going into negotiations, that was something that was really important to us. 
to uh, award our people that have been dedicated and at the same time increase um, people that may want to come to Newberry Port. Could, um, could I get a motion to approve the IA Let's contract? Do a roll call vote. Um, Our contract, yeah. That's right. Sure. Oh, the motion. So, yeah. Uh, uh, motion to approve the MOU for the IA contract. Is that detailed enough for something in the contract? I guess we all know what we're talking about. So moved. First, did you second? You made the I motion. made the motion. He moved. You seconded. Does that second. count? Okay. <laughs> All right. Discussion. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. So, uh, Mrs. Kennedy, we will be doing a, a roll, co roll yeah. call vote to approve this. After my, uh, Mayor Ridden? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Mr. Callahan? Yes. Um, and Mr. Cole? Yes. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, subcommittee updates, Mr. Callahan. Thank you. Uh, FinCom didn't actually meet. Um, we meet on the 14th of September, but uh, Superintendent Gallagher called me and asked if um, we could talk about this um, donation account. Uh, sadly, Ms. Dow passed away back in May, and the district is seeking approval to create an account and accept donations for the Breslin Hand Library in her memory. Um, so public gifts to the schools, which is policy KCD, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says the superintendent has the authority to accept gifts and the school committee um, has to approve it. So we have to, I'm making a motion to set up an account for the um, memory of Kim Dow for the Breslin Hand Library donations. So moved. I'll second and then I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, um, we have we have to accept. Is it enough to accept the creation of the account? We don't have to. Do we have to accept every donation yeah. that comes in? Okay, Just so there. this is sufficient. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, and is there any connection here with NEF, or is this totally, totally separate? Because I know that you're it's our the rep district rep. itself, right, Superintendent? Correct. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right. And um, one more point of clarification. So when you said it was for. Bresnahan Library, so how specific was that? Just anything that was just what, the um, well, I, I'm not really, I wasn't really, um, yeah. So there it was a memorial fund, uh, in memory of Miss Dow, and the proceeds are going to the Bresnahan Library because of the love of reading that she had. So that's in general, I think it's general, not only the book, yeah. The idea was yeah. instead of flowers, you know, make yeah. donations for books, sure. and, and yeah. No, I understand that. I just didn't know in terms of the like use for the, I mean, is it any more specific than that? Just use for, the, for use for the Bresnahan Library and how will that be administered or? Yeah, it would. we would follow the same process of our book selection with the librarian. Yeah, yeah. okay. So it would just be additional funds going into the Bresnahan Library for resources for the okay. students. Okay, thank you. Typically they would let, you know, they'd have like something on the book too that would let people know that this was purchased in memory of mm -hmm. you know, Kim Dow. So would we need a roll call vote for this, or? Just stand no, it's just standard roll. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I have one more um, comment about that. Superintendent, can we get, um, since this is the beginning of the year and everything, can we get a list for the next meeting, um, the list of those types of accounts? And um, along with the list of the fundraisers, you know, we get that every year. We don't mm -hmm. vote on them, but it's nice to see and make it public that this is what's being taken in from the public. I guess. Right. Okay, so because Ms. Balding and Mr. Menon aren't here this evening, we're gonna jump all the way down to transportation. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for including all of those minutes. You're welcome, and I'm sorry they weren't included earlier. It just sort of gives a summary of our progress over the past few months as a transportation committee. Um, and we will shortly be releasing a trans uh, transportation survey for families that will be going out through the various schools. I got, um, it, today. I got it today. Yeah, I got oh, it today. Filled it out. Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, so, and it, um, I'm excited that it got out so quickly. We were going to wait till September, but hopefully families will have a chance to fill it out. Um, it's going to just help inform some of our, our recommendations to the full committee hoping to get that to the full committee in October. And as we mentioned, when the, when the school committee formed us, formed this committee, 
Um, we're looking to make broad recommendations, not just about what should be assessed for fees, but also um, you know, what our sort of guiding principles should be related to transportation in the school district, um, and including um, not just busing, but also how people get to school by, by foot or by bike or by car. So um, we've had some really good conversations and the staff's been very helpful as well. Um, we also, uh, I know uh, Vice Chair Hall had mentioned interest in the EV electric vehicle grant that the city is working on and we are participating in discussions around that. It really is a um, being led by uh, city staff, um, Molly Attenborough and Recycling, she, the recycling coordinator, uh, sustainability is recycling coordinator, and then also um, that is a decision that we'd really have to be Salter Transportation's decision because they are our provider of buses. So um, that conversation is going on, and um, I think it's you know to be determined if we'll be able to take advantage this year, but certainly a, an important initiative to keep track of in the future. Great. So you're projecting October for. Hoping to have a report kind of back report on recommendations on specific to the bus fees in October, but also hopefully broader recommendations as well if we need to amend or update any of our policies related to transportation. Right. And at that time, if the committee decides there's anything else for us to work on, we can continue as a transportation committee or we can just sunset and move on to other things. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Ms. Ippolito, you're up. Hi, good evening, everybody. Good to see you again. Um, I have a couple of things to discuss this evening. Uh, the first that I will talk about, which is in the packet, is the curriculum renewal cycle for the Newburyport Public Schools. So um, this, the memorandum that I put in the packet was just to let the school committee know that that work is going to be um, started in the fall. And essentially, a, a curriculum renewal cycle is, um, is a five-year cycle in which we're looking at effect, effective instruction um, and it's alignment with the, um, the Department of Secondary and Elementary Education's alignment to the curriculum frameworks. Um, that work will be done by our newly formed uh, vertical curriculum team, as well as our current um, CEL and ILT. Those are teacher leaders at the different building le levels. Um, we use research in which to um, decide which curriculums for us to investigate. Um, their alignment, like I said, to the standards, but also, um, you know, the ties into um, what fits Newburyport specifically best. Um, the cycle itself, it, the picture didn't really come out that, that great uh, in the packet, but essentially uh, we look at the curriculum we cur currently have, its alignment. We look at uh, assessment data both within the district as well as MCAS data to see the effectiveness and um, the picture that it's painting in terms of our students learning. Um, from there, we decide, is this a pr uh, curriculum tool that we want to continue with or is there a need for a change and why? And all of those action steps will be brought in front of the school committee um, to be discussed uh, moving forward. This will probably be a year long um, process um, for us to do it well. But once we uh, look at all the different content areas throughout the district and we have it all mapped out, um, it should be pretty succinct um, action steps for us to move forward. Uh, the one, uh, one of the best reasons to have a curriculum renewal cycle is because it's going to help us not only investigating the curriculum that is constantly evolving and changing, because curriculum is not static, um, but it also will help us with budgeting because curriculum is expensive and we don't want everything to expire <laughs> on us at the same time or have a need at the same time. So we wanna be really conscientious um, about the budget piece as well. So that's just my overview of uh, the curriculum renewal cycle. I don't know if you wanted me to pause in between each and have any questions. Yeah, that would be great. So sure. I, I'm glad you mentioned the budget. So does the timing of, of this work hopefully aligns with um, us starting to think about budget considerations? Yes. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so yes. as long as you're keeping that in mind. That's yes, great. absolutely. Especially where you know we often talk about the ESSER funding and that is going to dry up very quickly and soon. So we wanna be really mindful about our action steps moving forward. 
um, and making sure that we're continually doing what's best for our students and giving them the best education, you know, through the school district. Great, Ms. Walker. Yeah, um, thank you, Ms. Abolito. Um, question about the the time frame, which it, which uh, Vice Chair Hall alluded to, which is, you know, it sounded like it's going to take a year to really get to a point where you have your recommendations formulated. And and are those recommendations forecasting for the next five years? what you would be working on with curriculum? Well, I think what we'll see in the end, because the first thing we need to do is educate the, the staff who we have working mm -hmm. on this project. It isn't something that I can just say, okay, we're doing a curriculum renewal cycle. I really believe in anything that we do, there needs to be a solid background of the people who are working mm -hmm. you know, on these committees and on these teams. So that's going to take some time. Um, some of the curriculum um, tools that we're using will already be on a year two or a year three just because we've, we've done a lot just in the past year curriculum wise in terms of uh, purchases and of course um, due to COVID, which I hate to continually say that, but it's the truth, due to COVID there were a lot of different tools brought into the district out of necessity. So we want to just figure out um, in certain content areas like what is still a great fit and like it says, like I said, meets all the criteria that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. you know, um, that our students are learning using these tools, that they align to the frameworks, um, that they meet all the goals and the vision um, of the district. Okay, and so at the end of your year, first year of work, do you anticipate sort of a list of recommendations that you'll mm -hmm. provide to the school committee as sort of a report card on your work for Absolutely. the year? Absolutely, Okay, yes. and then maybe sort of strategically thinking ahead to some of the expenses. So for example, I guess I'm thinking of a scenario where we've purchased a certain curriculum package and it is up for renewal mm -hmm. in a certain, and we have to plan ahead for that or how we would make changes. Is, those, is that an example of the types of recommendations you would have? Yes, Okay. so that will be a consideration for us too to see where our contracts are in certain uh, curriculum tools that we're using. You know, what's up sooner than later? Where is there already uh, a space that we know that we have a need? Um, and then also what is manageable by our staff? So at the elementary level, they've put a lot of work into literacy, and we have a lot of work to do in math and science and social studies, but we can't ask our t staff to take all of that on and do it well. So we wanna be able to have a plan. We wanna map it out together with our elementary team and say, okay, here's our five-year range plan. This is what it looks like. Here's the investment. Here's the communication we've had about it so that everybody um, is knowledgeable about those action steps. Okay. And one more just follow up. Do you, what do you anticipate like the role of the uh, curriculum group that you have now, the CISL group? W would they have any role in this or would mm -hmm. it be more just a sounding board or what do you So think? my hope is to, um, and we started this last year, is really engage the CISL team to have conversations because we have such a diverse group of people and to get you know community feedback, parent feedback, administrative feedback, teacher feedback, and student feedback, which is all important. And as we go through these processes of adopting curriculum, um, it, it's something that I, I feel should be uh, very transparent and out in our community so that everyone is aware of um, the action steps that we're taking. Okay. Because ultimately we need to be in a partnership with our community and our families as well as our staff. Great, so. so the CISL will get updates on, what yes. on your progress. Mm -hmm. They'll actually do some work. They'll be doing oh, some work okay. around um, this work as well. I think this is great. Like, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of school districts. I, I had worked with a lot of school districts, so I know, you know, the five-year curriculum plan is is pretty typical. Um, so I, I do hope we have it posted somewhere too, so people can keep track of the progress. And what I like about it too is it continuously has you evaluating the purchases you've made and if they're making an impact. And I hope that gets more rolled into getting back to some more data data teams and, and data reports to school committee and just you know just talking numbers about where we've been at since, you know, before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and now here we are after the pandemic. Because, um, I mean, sometimes you can go through a cycle and if the math program's working, you know, the, you know we're not gonna switch it, right? Because the data's gonna tell us like, hey, we're, we're doing well and there's no, you know, new trends out there. So I, I do like that it's constantly evaluating what we're doing, but then also looking at what's out there as well and having our, you know, team evaluate some of those new, new materials that are out there too. So I think it's great. Thank you, Mayor. And I love that you said that because a layer that I'm not talking about tonight, I'll, I'll just touch on, is we have a new district data um, team mm -hmm. 
um, that we're starting this year. And so that will kind of layer, be a, a piece of this curriculum renewal cycle. So we have like many hands doing uh, this work. Great. So, great. Mr. Callahan, go ahead. You're surprised I have a question about curriculum? Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not so much about this plan, although I guess it does. So this is a, a long process. How do you guys deal with a sudden decision by DESE to increase the um, grades required for MCAS, which for the record is a terrible, horrible idea. But how do you deal with that with something you've already started doing? So mm -hmm. for this coming Great series question. of tests, how are you gonna, yes. how are you gonna, how does that work? Great question. So MCAS is MCAS is MCAS, so it's um, tied to the actual framework standards, right? So that, the changes that they've made to the scores was really with literacy, and I believe the, the um, proficient score was 486 for math and it was much lower for literacy and now they've made them equal. Um, so in terms of, that doesn't necessarily have to do with the curriculum renewal cycle or the standards per se, but like what are we going to do for students? That's more related to our RTI model, our intervention model for those kids who are already struggling. Um, and we've done some great work. Um, and again, I can only speak um, to the, to what I've seen the past year, but we've worked really hard to actually look at the data and look at individual students and say, one size does not fit all. So if we're looking at fractions and we're give, doing the proper assessments, then we're following up with this group of students. They don't even have a basic understanding of what a fraction is or a unit fraction. But we have this group of students who are still not performing where we need them to be, but their um, concern is more around you know, comparing and contrasting fractions. So those should be two different intervention groups, right? So we need to be more targeted and direct uh, with the students that we're working and with. And you guys feel that you can pivot that quickly when the state comes up with a change that fast? I'm yeah. not gonna say always, but I'm gonna say we're gonna do our best. Okay. Because <laughs> it's you. always changing. It's always changed. Just today they came up with some um, new social studies, um, what I wanna call them. It's not, an, not the new curriculum, but they came up with- um, uh, yeah, like a handout that you can't print. <laughs> so if you're listening, I'd like printables, please. <laughs> I can't stare at a screen this long and read all that information. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Anything okay. else? I think you can move on. Thank you. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, the rest of my reports are kind of exciting. There's, uh, it's been a very busy summer here in Newburyport. Uh, we, as you know, we have an incredible staff. So this summer was our uh, first ever advanced academy. Um, which was the brainchild of Superintendent Gallagher and um, was really carried out by Dr. Tom Abrams. And so we were able to offer seven different advanced courses for students from grades six through 12. Um, and it's in your packet, but we um, had four of the classes run for one week in July and we had three of the classes run for one week in August. Um, they had between four and 10 students in each course. Um, there's a TED talk that's out there that uh, Dr. Abrams and Ms. Furlong had done. Um, there was farm to table, there were food trends, making graphic novel. I was just really like creative, um, advanced um, coursework um, for our students who um, tend to be uh, advanced learners. So it was a great experience and we will continue that moving forward for next year. Um, I touched on this, I think in the springtime, we also had the professional development, the Oceanside um, professional development where we partnered with um, Pentucket and Triton, uh, where we offered many different courses. Um, some highlights, for example, was the Trauma One course that was instructed by Tara Rossi, who's the principal at the Molin. Uh, she's also an adjunct professor for Leslie and it was very well attended. She had well over 25 uh, staff members from various districts. Um, it was really great because at the end she had done um, some project-based work with the group and I happened to go in to you know, see what was happening um, and everyone just wants more, more, more. There's actually five courses in the series for trauma. So we're investigating um, bringing more uh, trauma professional development to the district. But we had everything from book groups to technology, um, and you know, the feedback was um, pretty good. We were a little disappointed, if I'm being honest, with the attendance. We w really wanted it to be like 25 people in every class, but it was summer 
everyone was exhausted. And so we just might make some uh, tweaks for next year of how we can make the program even better or send it out even earlier because a lot of people's responses were, I'd love to take it, but I've already signed up for something else. So, um, but thank you to uh, Anna Bates, who's the Assistant Superintendent in Triton, and Brett Conway, who's the Assistant Superintendent in Pantucket for partnering uh, with me on um, that project. And my last report tonight is around our summer curriculum proposals. This was really exciting for me because when I started last year, I was at the tail end when people were just handing in their projects and it was kind of overwhelming because <laughs> there was just like a lot of paper coming at me. But now that I have a handle on it, I'm just really um, excited by the fact that we have over 50 staff members who have um, been excited throughout this year of the work that we've done around curriculum mapping, um, or other professional development they've taken, for example, around executive functioning, um, or the tiered intervention work that we're doing and they wanted to take it further. And so um, we have many projects um, being presented by October 1st of this school year um, to my office to be looked at and that will be incorporated into um, their school buildings as well. Um, I included a list of this, the staff by building uh, who was involved. Uh, I'm just really excited to uh, see their work. I've already received uh, curriculum mapping for our um, newcomer students. As, we, as you know, we didn't necessarily have a newcomer program when we welcomed our many newcomers in January. And our new hire, Brendan Burke uh, and Chris Apicios said, you know, let's, let's get to it this summer and they did an excellent job. So we have um, a newcomer program uh, mapped out for all of next year. So we're really excited about that addition to our uh, curriculum documentation. Uh, we also have been working closely, Jamie Sokolowski and I are co-chairing with Stephanie Phillips with our performing arts team to look at the arts within the Newburyport Public Schools. Um, and this is the performing arts team. And we um, have a lot of exciting changes coming um, to build up that program between marching band, bringing recorders into the fourth grade, um, having our students participate in parades within the town, many exciting things, as, uh, as well as curriculum mapping, which is always important to know where we're going and um, make sure there's no redundancy. Uh, we have our NEASC team that was led by Aaron Urbago-Smith um, and his team, uh, and they're preparing for our NEASC visit um, and information. And another exciting project that I just want to bring your attention to is a labyrinth um, project that Pam Jamison and Kim Salate are heading up. And this is a lot of work. They um, have a lot of action steps to uh, make this happen. So they're looking to put a labyrinth, uh, a labyrinth at the Bresnahan School that leads here to the senior center, center and then I guess it connects. Um, it's kind of like a, a peaceful walking path where people get centered. They'll do a better job when we get this all settled explaining it. Um, but they've uh, partnered with Anna Jake's Hospital to do a donation to support them and they're also working with the Cultural Arts Council for uh, further donations and so they, I think they're on step two already. I'm just really proud of them and all the hard work that they've put into uh, making this happen for Newburyport. Great. Any Good questions? Yes, go ahead. Um, some of these are just clarification questions because sure. I might have missed what you were saying. Um, but the Advanced uh, Learning Academy that you had during the summer, it looked like some cool um, yeah. courses. That's exciting. Well, I missed how, what your participation was for that. Oh. I can tell you. I didn't tell you. I have it written down. Okay. I can tell you specifically. Okay. For the TED Talk, we had five students. For wellness, we had four students. Making a graphic novel, 10 students. Electronic text, 10 students. Food trends, six students. Farm to table, hands-on learning, seven students. And code and crafts, eight students. And were those overlapping? Were the, did you have some students produce some, multiple? Mm -hmm, okay. Some, not many, but some. Mm -hmm. Because it was offered, one was uh, July 11th through 15th, and then the other courses were August 8th uh, through 12th. Okay. So it was a little bit over, overlapping. Okay. Um, and then on the, um, the, the, the last item you presented about, I, I 
I think I missed what the summer curriculum proposals part was. So these are ideas that staff worked on over the summer to present to you, and then they're gonna work on these things over the course of the school year? Uh, no, they work on them over the summer. So okay. they, what they do is they write up a, a curriculum proposal uh, to work on during the summer, and then I meet with I each individual team to just discuss it, talk about the connection to the strategic plan, talk about the connection to our curriculum, their buildings, there's a lot of different okay. um, pieces to it. <clears throat> And then um, we discuss, you know, the stipend for the position, the number of hours, and then by October 1st, they submit a completed plan to me, either on paper or a lot of staff now are using uh, Google Classroom, for example, okay. to uh, share the information. Okay. And part of the requirement for the work is that they then share their finished product with their team, whether it's their grade level team, their entire school, uh, what have you. But I also have a collection in my office to say, hey, this is, looks great. You did this at the high school. I'd like you to connect with the NOC, for example. I think that I see an opportunity here for us to expand this um, activity. So if they present the summary or the proposal to you on October 1st, when would they typically be rolling out that curriculum? Or is it just for people? For, when, when, would they, when would that curriculum start? Or? Once they, I, I read through everything and then I give them a, my John Hancock approval. <laughs> so they could start working on that curriculum in November of that year? or it would So they would be? have established it already. That's the I final see. product that they're giving me okay. is the completed product. Okay. Yes. Sorry right. if I didn't make that clear. No, that's okay. I probably missed some of your what you were saying. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm particularly interested in some of the work that's interested to hear more what comes out of the performing arts team and some of the other efforts. So we'll for example, more. like uh, to give you another example, at the Bresnahan, um, the BCBA, who's, who just started with us last year, is creating a catalog of activities of executive functioning that she's sharing with the entire Bresnahan staff. So for example, if they have a student who is having organizational skill concerns, they will go into this organizational folder by developmental ability and be able to have a list of activities all pre-made for them to utilize within their classrooms. So it's kind of, they're learning together, but they're also supporting each other, which mm -hmm. I love is one of my favorite things for educators to do with each other. Great, thank great. you. We all set? Lots of great work going on, Miss Ippolito. Yes, thank you. A very powerful team here in Newburyport. I'm so proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Superintendent. All right. You're up. Yeah, and just to follow up, the Advanced Academy, I just wanna thank, um, Tom Abrams and Lisa Polito. So that whole idea is supporting all students. And I think we have some great programming for our struggling learners over the summer. Um, but after this pilot program this year, there's been a lot of enthusiasm with the teachers mm -hmm. and then also a lot of the students because this was our first year rolling this out. So I think the peers are like, oh, I wish I did that. And I think next year going into the summer, people, families would be well aware of the Summer Academy. And the teachers are all excited because they want to create some more courses also. So I think it's, uh, I just want to thank Lisa Polito and Tom Abrams for getting that rolling, so. All right, so uh, superintendent's report. Um, the first uh, up for us is really just um, school safety. I think as we all know, um, through the spring, and throughout the summer, uh, school safety is on, I think, everyone's mind. Um, and I just kind of want to highlight some of the things that we have in place and some of the things um, that we'll be um, really moving forward uh, with throughout the school. So as part of Newberry Ports, part of the uh, Northern Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council, or NEMLIC, and um, so they assist us with any type of crisis uh, planning. Um, and they also assist us with emergency plans with updated uh, responses for various um, situations that can happen within the community, but also within the school system. Um, throughout the summer, part of our process was to update the Newburyport uh, public schools plan. And that's been shared with our principals in the front office. Each has a copy. Um, and it really gets into a lot of details on how we respond to different scenarios. Um, so we're really excited about that because that's all updated. The other piece is um, District Attorney Jonathan Blodgett, as you all know, is stepping down. 
um, as a district attorney for Essex County, uh, but he's always been a strong uh, supporter of schools and public safety. Um, so we also uh, work with our local law enforcement and the assistant uh, district attorney in the CCI Community Collaborative Initiative. So they meet uh, with high school and also middle school administrators on a monthly basis. So that's been ongoing um, within Newburyport Public Schools. They talk about trends. They can talk about uh, situations um, if they're, um, you know, with crime in the areas, uh, substance issues, uh, and then also some individual uh, family issues uh, if, you know, the district attorney can help out with that. Um, we also have our uh, memorandum of understanding with the Newburyport Police Department and our SRO, which is also an initiative through the district attorney's office. We're uh, reinstating this year our district safety-wide committee. Um, and then out of the district-wide committee, safety committee, we'll have um, um, crisis teams within each building. Mike Tester, if you don't know, Mike Tester uh, did a lot of work on safety and building safety for years, um, and he's gonna be one of the co-chairs for that, so we're really excited uh, to have him as part of that. And then also our district committee will have, um, you know, uh, different community members and law enforcement uh, personnel as part of that and part of that planning process. One of the pieces over the summer that we are looking at is implementing a campus security personnel. Um, so we've reached out to some retired police officers, some retired firefighters and teachers um, <laughs> to really have um, campus security would be just another uh, adult in the building uh, assisting the administration, but also walking the building, checking on doors and um, just have another eyes within the school. Uh, throughout the school day. We also have this idea of partnering with local colleges and universities, similar to a fellowship program that you may see uh, with teachers, uh, but also working with the criminal justice and law enforcement majors too. So um, we really would like to uh, implement that. There is some grant uh, funding around school safety that we would utilize uh, for those positions. All staff within the first two days will have uh, um, ALICE training and uh, their own online program completed, um, refreshing everyone's um, response uh, to emergency crisis within the schools. We're looking, uh, working with Steve Burkholm right now in our FOB system. As you all know, we have a, a FOB uh, little key that gets the staff members into buildings, but we're looking to have um, that access through the staff IDs. So instead of having a separate key, the staff ID would swab uh, people in the building, so you'd have an understanding who's coming in the buildings and who's leaving the buildings. Um, so we're working on upgrading that FOB system. We're also uh, investing uh, the Raptor 5 visitor pass system so this is um, a system that uh, any visitors into the school when they check in to any of the offices would uh, utilize their license and the license runs a background check. It um, also creates an ID pass, so you'd have a picture, the visitor pass, and a detailed pass of where that visitor is going. So if it was a parent meeting, uh, you would have the parent's picture where they were going, what room. Um, so we're excited about that uh, to add another uh, layer of security for the, the front offices. And each school will have that. As part of our protocols this year and uh, with the updates through NEMLEC, um, you know, we will be having a minimum of four fire drills um, with our schools. And I think that first week, the principals will be doing a manual fire drill. Um, so all staff and students are familiar with exiting the building in the first week of school. Um, there will be two ALICE drills, and um, those will be uh, utilized in working with the um, district safety team, and it will look probably different at each grade level um, as we work with all of the students and staff uh, with that within the buildings. We always have one uh, stay in place uh, drill, 
um, that we will be working with uh, throughout the school year. And then there's three safety meetings uh, as part um, of the school year. So we'll have a, uh, obviously the first couple of days with the faculty, we'll be talking about safety and protocols and being more alert throughout the day. And then um, there'll be another meeting in the fall, the winter, in the spring, just to check in to always keep school safety uh, on everyone's radar. So we have some things that are in place uh, now that we're um, gonna continue to enhance and we have some other initiatives that will be up and coming um, this. And I just always believe I've been um, in this for a long time. Um, and I just think it's it's always that, that very simple saying, uh, see something, say something. Um, and I think for our students, our faculty, our community, um, if there is something that makes someone uncomfortable or something that just doesn't feel right, the number one uh, safety feature that we all have is, is just to really watch out for one another and, and give information that we could help a, you know, a fellow colleague or a student or family. Um, and I think that's gonna be also part of the training that you know, we all, we're all here as community members and uh, if there is something that is concerning, uh, just let someone know and then we'll follow up. So that's kind of what our highlights are right now for safety uh, as we're moving into the school year. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks for that update. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to acknowledge that it's distressing that we have to be so thorough in our preparation for safety, but I think it's just reflective of our time. Um, and I think it's very important for families and staff that we have these preparations. Um, so I appreciate the thoroughness of it. Um, I guess you went through a lot today and um, very, very excited. I, I don't know if excited is the word, but I'm happy to hear that there are things that you're pursuing that will improve our access to buildings and monitoring who has access and so forth. Um, would be helpful maybe if there was a resource that uh, both we could look at or families could look at that sort of outlines some of the things you went over mm -hmm. you know I think I know there's some you don't want to provide too much detail but you enough to just give us an overview of what you're doing Absolutely. Um, maybe just a recap of what you went over tonight would be helpful in a written form some kind of format um, but yeah so I, get, I just want to acknowledge that I think this is important and timely but also distressing Yes, it's it's a. I think it's a it's that fine balance of being informative, being prepared, but at the same time, um, as we implement different safety features, it's you have to be cognizant. You don't want people to have you know anxiety and fear over preparation. And I just always feel if it's part of our routine um, and it becomes part of our school day then it just becomes more of a, you know, protocols and procedures versus something, you know, that's ends up becoming very scary for people. Do you, um, do you have a timeline for any of these upgrades, like the, the fobs to the IDs um, mm -hmm. and the, you know, those scanners for people's driver's licenses is set? Do we know when those things are? Yes, we're, we're hoping uh, before school starts um, to have some of these things in place. I know the um, Raptor 5 is something that uh, we're working on. Lisa Furlong and her team are uh, working on that piece. Uh, the FOB system and the IDs is something that Steve Burkholm is working on, so we're hoping to upgrade, upgrade those uh, sooner than later. So we would probably be looking to um, start with the ID fobs with staff first um, to see how that goes and then eventually roll it out for the student IDs. So then students uh, will be able to, you know, okay. you could, the idea is, you know, when arrival and dismissal, when students are coming in, they would, once they're all in the building, then you can, uh, you know, shut down different doors so everyone has to come in the front entrance. So that student that's late probably won't like that because they'll have to run to the front to swab in. But so basically, these upgrades are ASAP. Yeah, we're saying. working on. We want to get these um, uh, up and running as soon as as soon as possible. Okay. So, Mayor, did you want to? 
Yeah, I was gonna say, <clears throat> we're also talking about um, doing another public meeting around school safety. I know we did this a number of years ago and it was a really well attended, great meeting. Um, probably would be maybe the first meeting in October now. I'm, 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 I've already talked to the police a little bit about it, but um, you know, I think this will be just another opportunity to get a lot of this good information out to parents. And um, you know, I, I know everyone's home watching us right now, but for the ones that aren't home watching us right now, <laughs> it would be nice to have a, a forum where they could come in and, and, and talk to us about, about these important things. Um, yeah, and I tell you, we're, we're getting a lot of calls at City Hall this summer about school safety, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with what happened before the summer started. But um, you know, it, it's still I, I think it's important information, and I don't know where we are with like on our new website with a maybe a, a public safety part of it, or uh, I mean, nice, you know, what what Ms. Walker was talking about, have, having that information accessible for, for uh, parents on, online would be a good idea too. I think. Great. But it sounds like by the time we have that forum, we probably would have these things in place. Number of these mm -hmm. things, at least in place, which would be great. Okay. All right. Um, next, back to school preparations. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to credit uh, Steve Burkholm, our custodians and maintenance crew. Um, as you know, our schools stay busy throughout the summer, so they had to coordinate a lot of the cleaning. Um, you know, around summer school, around school uh, classroom usage. So they did a great job. We're on target. The floors are nice and shiny, and we haven't put this in, but you know, the students can still wear their shoes. But we were thinking, have them take their shoes off before they come in the buildings. But I think, I think we'll let them wear their shoes as long as they wipe their feet. Um, no, all kidding aside. Um, just a lot of pride in Newburyport. Our custodian crew um, is just uh, phenomenal. We've been working throughout the summer uh, since the beginning of, of August, and as um, Ms. Furlong alluded to, about communication, about same messaging. Um, so we're working with our principals on the, the first two days, but also their communication out to families. As you know, the, the new website and our newsletters are more active where we can add a lot of the links and videos. Um, so a lot of the parents uh, per school will be getting information that way. I'm sending out a, a family letter on Thursday um, so families will be able to see district-wide information. Um, and then the building principals will be following up with families um, with that letter. We sent our communication out to our staff today also, the transportation survey uh, went out and some other surveys and communication are going out. So I just, uh, school preparations and opening schools, we're in, great, we're in a great great spot right now and uh, just a collective effort um, of the leadership team along with a lot of the school personnel. Uh, as I said, take great pride in the Newburyport Public Schools, so we're just really pleased. Um, our lunch program, as you all know, uh, for this year, our lunch and breakfast program um, is going to be funded uh, through the state, so that will be free. Um, for all of our families, there are still checks and balances. The people are going through the line so we can keep accurate records of who's getting lunch and who is also getting breakfast. Um, but that, that was great news with Governor Baker uh, continuing that lunch and breakfast program uh, for Massachusetts. So that's good news. Um, also, our professional development, oh, nope, I'm sorry, I skipped down. Our update on the two-day professional development for our leadership retreat um, is part of our process in opening up schools. We had a meeting with our principals um, on August 11th and really covered a lot of the opening school uh, opportunities and um, letters and all that information. So we kind of got the housekeeping out of the way with the building principals, which led for a two-day great retreat, a leadership retreat with our administrative team. And then also, as Ms. Ippolito mentioned, we brought the vertical team teachers with us. And we had uh, Athena Learning um, come in, and they worked with us on uh, team culture, problems of practice when we're looking at instruction. Administrative goals. I'm sorry. Uh, instructional leadership development, and then um, and we focused on common language uh, for instructional leadership with the teachers and the administrators. And it was really great uh, as we broke off into groups. 
um, really just working with teachers and administrators. It was a great blended learning of, I just think of some great instructional leaders and we're really excited to bring in that leader, that vertical team on board with us. Um, and it was just a great day. Our second day on August 18th, um, the leadership team uh, worked on strategic planning. As we all know, phase two of that uh, strategic plan, we developed our district goals or the beginning of our district goals, administrative goals, and then also we focused on curriculum instruction and assessment. And then the afternoon after lunch is where we focus as a leadership team on school safety. Um, and we talked about a lot of these new um, programs that we're bringing on. We also talk about uh, awareness. And then what was really important for me as a former principal is how you communicate that with students. So it, it's more of a process and procedure and not uh, a scary thing that, that we all have to be, be doing. So I think our principals are uh, doing a great job. Um, and when we talk about safety in schools, they'll have the ability to communicate that to their, their students. So we've been busy um, in August, and I th I'm really looking forward to the opening day. We had mentoring today. Um, so we had all of our new teachers in. We had our um, mentors in. It's going to be a three-day program. Miss Ippolito and uh, Bonnie Tanner have done a great job in preparing. Uh, Mayor uh, Raiden got to say a few words today. Um, Ms. Hall, Ms. Walker, and Mr. Callahan. We're there, and um, Mr. Cole will be there tomorrow because you heard there was ice cream in the afternoon, <laughs> right? So we have, um, you know, tomorrow is day two. We also will be uh, having lunch and then some ice cream at the end. So I just want to thank our local businesses uh, who sponsored, uh, Metsy's sponsored the lunch today for the district. We have Flatbread from Amesbury sponsoring lunch tomorrow. And Haji's ice cream sponsored the ice cream. So, oh, and Abraham's bagels. So, oh, and the PTO also paid for Metsy's. So, yeah, great job. So it was a. Uh, everyone's very enthusiastic, and we can't wait to have the kids back in a, about another week or so. Great. Any uh, questions, comments? Ms. Walker. I always have something. Um, it's been a few months. I haven't had a chance to ask a lot of questions. Um, the, just a qu question on the strategic plan, because you mentioned it. Um, when can we, sort of, there's sort of a next step phase. When, what is your next anticipated sort of report back to the school committee? I think, um, you know, for us, um, we plan on part of the whole process for this year is to have, I want to say October, okay. uh, once we work with our teachers. So the whole idea is to develop the district goals, then that will develop into the principal goals, tied to the school improvement plans, tied to the teacher's goals. So part of that strategic planning is working with the principals and, and kind of how we're all moving in the same direction. So um, the teachers will be working on their goals in the first two days of school, um, but the final, according to the contract, the final goals will be in October. So I would anticipate an October meeting to kind of show how all those uh, strategic goals are working. Mm -hmm. And then just to follow up on the, the great event you put on today, it was nice to participate in that, but um, so many new staff coming in. Do we have a lot of vacancies still left to fill or have we been able to pretty much fill all of them? At that's, this point? that's a great question. Yeah, so we're fully staffed right now. The only um, positions, there's a few IA positions mm -hmm. um, that we're interviewing now, but for the teacher staff, administrative staff throughout the district, we're fully staffed. Uh, any new business? I'll just I'll mention, I'll mention one. Um, so the vice chair and I had a, a couple initial conversations around uh, CISL maybe moving towards a official subcommittee again. Um, and I, I think it's a good idea. Um, my thought on it was let's, let's take the rest of the year. I don't think you should ever do something mid-year. I think we should do it starting January 1st when we come up with our new assignments for for committees and things like that. But um, I do think as a committee, we should ha start having those conversations and what that looks like and really, you know, institutionalize that somewhere and codify it so, um, you know, we have a, a good system in place and, and, and so that subcommittee is effective. But I think it's a great idea and I, and I think it's 
perfect to give some voice in the community to you know some of the curriculum decisions we're making and I think it sounds like you know uh, Lisa Marie has some great things coming up and some good resources that's going to be available for for parents in the community to, to take a look at and, and comment on so I think that's great what was that Sissel Sissel yes how do you spell that C-I-S-L that's what acronyms yeah okay thank you curriculum instruction and student life just wanted to make that I think we'll be able to build on the work that Ms. Ivalito has done very effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to mention that our next business meeting is Tuesday, September 6th, and that will be in the NHS library. So a couple, couple changes. It's not Monday because that's Labor Day. Uh, it's not in the Senior Center because that's the night before the primary election and we'll be setting up in here. Yes. And I just have um, Bob LaFrance uh, contacted me uh, from the Lions Club regarding a uh, plaque. I just wanted to um, put that on the radar possibly for the next meeting. Um, well, I'll get some more information for school committee uh, regarding that. And then the, the other piece, um, part of the NTA uh, aspect of the contract Typically, the coaches' salaries also follow the COLA. So whatever the, the teachers over the three years, the coaches' salaries in the back for those stipends. And that was something I touched base with um, Mr. Ganjemi, um, that we didn't, it was an oversight on our part. Um, so I talked to Michelle uh, McNulty, our uh, legal attorney. She drafted an MOU. And I'd like to maybe put that in uh, for the new business uh, going into the next meeting of what that looks like. So the same, the same for the coaches, the same salary increases over the three years would also be incorporated in that. Can I ask a question on that? Mm -hmm. Is that new? So I know, no. I know that there's a lot of press over the last probably 10 years about how coaches' salaries didn't increase over 20 years, and then you know, they finally got about 23 about, years, yeah. Yeah, right. it was a long time before mm -hmm. there were increases. But so is that new now that it's included in the? It's in the contract? yes, it's in the. Exactly. It's part of the the coaches' okay. salaries yeah, is part of the. I just jumped up at home because right. you know, you, you coach for so long without <laughs> right. getting a bump. No, right. So that's part of the coaches' salaries is part of the con overall contract. Over contract. No, it makes Correct. sense. I just yeah. I was just curious if that was I was that was a new thing. So you're saying that's already been negotiated? No, the M, the the I think it was an oversight during the NTA negotiations. It was an oversight that we didn't address those coaches' salaries in the back. Okay. So what's so what is our role at this point? To so the the role would be for you. Um, so we have a MO memorandum of understanding regarding the coaches' salaries as part of the NTA contract. So that draft would be presented at the school committee, so you can look at that language. Okay, so, so sort of it would like be an the same. Three, correct. The existing so contract. it would be the okay. three percent, the two percent, and the two percent over the three years. All correct right. for the coaches. So that this doesn't have to happen at the same time, but I've already mentioned to Vice Chair Hall and the uh, member Callahan. Uh, having an understanding of fees and what they're being used for and overall expenses. So I think it would be timely at, you know, in the next few meetings to have that conversation presentation. I think it should go uh, through. Phil to have it on the FinCom on the yeah, 15th. Yeah, which I think it makes sense to go through FinCom first, but um, because I think that gives us a sense of, you know, coaches' salaries, are those part of the expenses? Yep. What's, what are these fees paying for? And um, I think, you know, just having that understanding. I'm not saying to hold up a contract, but. Um, I think it just helps us know what these expenses are. Might be a good idea in FinCom too to have an idea of, of where our coaching salaries right now rank and maybe the KPN league, mm -hmm. just see if we're consistent and then if, see if we're in the ballpark or if there's still some work to be do, done there. It, the, the increases a few years ago brought us right up into That's the That's what mid, I thought, yeah. Mid no, mid I remember it was, a, it was. We it was, were dead at the bottom. Right. And, uh, you know, it, we're. I think we're respectable, and I, and I think the periodic uh, increase with the contract is going to keep you in space. Yeah. Great. Okay, I think I already mentioned to most of you we, we will not be having an executive session this evening, unless, Mayor, you have a need for it. 
Since oh. two members aren't here, I thought we would just hold off. No, so that's fine. No. Um, I can make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay.